Good morning. Good morning. Um, you, uh, as an organization, have been here before, and so I think you're familiar with uh, the, the drill. Uh, the, this is a regularly scheduled and duly called meeting of the Community Preservation Committee hearings with respect to the applicant for funding for fiscal year 2021. Um, what we have done is we've allocated a half hour to you. Uh, we uh, ask you to take uh, 10 minutes or so to sort of flesh out uh, your uh, application and then open the floor uh, to us for questions from the commissioners. And we would ask that you start by identifying yourselves and speak to the TV. Yeah, yeah I'm very new, I'm very new executive director for the Nantucket Athenaeum. My name is Ann Scott. Uh, thank you so much for seeing us today. Um, and Lincoln Thurber is here with us. Some of you may know Lincoln. He's the head of our reference department. Yeah. So uh, this process is totally new to me. I did look over the application that Ms. Anderson submitted on behalf, behalf of the Nantucket Athenaeum. Uh, and so I put together a few notes to review that and then open the floor for questions. Okay, terrific. Great. So as executive director, I am very thankful for the ongoing work to preserve the Athenaeum, which has been made possible through the CPC funding. The collaboration has included preservation and restoration of building fabric and garden and historic resources, most recently conservation of its historic oil paintings. Since 1834, the Nantucket Athenaeum has held an important and special collection of no, no, art related to Nantucket. Nantucket. And many works are on display with free access for all visitors and has proved a valuable cultural and historic resource for the community and the general public. In order to preserve these resources, the Athenaeum had a conservation expert assess their condition and provide us with a detailed report of the needed conservation treatment. To continue uh, access to these historic representations of Nantucket life, the Athenaeum developed a five-phase conservation plan and turned to the CPC to request funding to conserve 15 oil paintings depicting significant 19th century Nantucket individuals, ships, portraits, and landscapes. We're very grateful to the CPC for accepting our proposal now in its final phase, which we're applying for. The final funding will allow us to send the last set of paintings to conservator Patricia Garland in New Haven, Connecticut. She will treat each painting and return within 12 months of receipt. The Athenaeum will pay a portion of the frame preservation work to be done by a frame conservationist specialist and cover the transportation costs to and from New Haven. With the CPC's help, their preservation will be complete in fiscal year 21. Um, if you'd like, I can talk about the paintings that will be included in this preservation piece. I think it would just be interesting to know the, the last, uh, the, the, what, what's involved in the last paintings. A little description of them. Okay. Not a description of them, just what's involved in the No, 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 not no, the description of the paintings. The description yeah. of the paintings. Yeah. So the portraits include, a, um, the paintings include a portrait by David, of David Joy. He is one of the founders of the Athenaeum and its first president. He was born on Nantucket. He was a self-taught chemist um, who made his fortune when he developed a way of making candles from whale spermaceti. He was president of the Anti-Slavery Society and responsible for bringing Frederick Douglass to speak at the Athenaeum. He also served three terms in the state legislature. And the artist was uh, William Spain, born in Newburyport in 1803. His family uh, were among the first settlers of Nantucket, and he painted more portraits of Nantucketers of the early 19th century than any other artist. Uh, we will be removing surface grime and varnish, and the painting will be brush varnished with a new clear varnish with a UV inhibitor. The losses will be retouched and a new backing board applied for $15,000 for that piece. Um, also included is a portrait of William Hodden, who came to Nantucket from Newport, Rhode Island in 1820 as a silversmith. He entered the whale oil business and operated a candle house in what is now the Whaling Museum. In 1844, he purchased land on Main Street 
and built two neoclassical houses using Frederick Coleman as his architect. In 1862, he left a $2,000 request to the Athenaeum for repairs to its building. In appreciation, the board commissioned a portrait from George Fish. Fish was born on Nantucket and studied in Paris. He had studios in New York City and in the West Room of the Athenaeum and was a leading painter of his time on Nantucket. The work was painted in 1863. The proposed treatment is to have the verso vacuumed and the painting keyed out to reduce slag. Distortions will be reduced and debris removed from between the back of the canvas and stretcher. Surface grime will be removed, varnish will be removed, and an attempt will be made to even the cleaning. It will be newly varnished with a UV inhibitor. Losses will be filled and retouched, and a new backing board applied for $3,000. The final piece is another portrait by George Fish, this one of Walter Folger, born on Nantucket and a great-great-great-grandson of Peter Folger. Walter Folger practiced law before serving as member of the Massachusetts State Senate. He was a scientist and astronomer, creating an astronomical clock. He was one of the first vice presidents of the Athenaeum and a trustee of the first congregational church. This portrait was painted in 1892, and the proposed treatment is to have the verso vacuumed, the top tacking margin reinforced, and the canvas reattached. The painting will be keyed out, the surface grime and varnish removed, and a tear mended. It will be brush varnished with a UV inhibitor, losses filled and retouched, and a new backing board applied for $3,000. These oil portraits represent a vivid record of individuals who left a significant mark on the history of Nantucket. And on behalf of the community that are able to view these works, we thank you for cons consideration of this vital endeavor. Questions of the committee? John. Uh, just curious, the uh, what, what are the values of these paintings? I mean, we're looking at I'm, I'm guessing a relatively small percentage of what the overall value is per per painting. Right, right. Um, Besides the historical significance. Right. Um, I actually do not have access to um, any kind of assessment of that value. Like, do you have any understanding of what the original? Value is? I believe the David Joy one is uh, probably in excess of that fifteen thousand dollars. Um, as far as the other two paintings, I'm not sure. Um, and, and as far as uh, display when they're they're finished, you know, shipping back, are there uh, in, historically in the past? What have you done with those? Just in, in, um, integrated them into the, the, they are show on or display correctly, yeah. and they would, currently they're on the wall. And finally, same the, has the same company been doing this, or? That's my understanding. Yeah. Okay. So obviously, it's a good relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Right. Just a question with, to follow up, John. Um, I know I have some paintings, and I have them listed separately in my uh, insurance policy. Mm -hmm. Do you guys just? I know the insurance is ridiculous on Yantaka. Mm -hmm. Do you have these guys? You know, like a separate. Because some of them may be really valuable, or if it's just the contents of the library has got up. I believe it's the total contents of yeah. the library, and then um, we recently went through a process where um, the building is alarmed and security cameras are installed as well to secure the value. Okay, um, and it'd be nice to see the project finished, and if this is even close to what they look like now, because <laughs> they're so so dark. Um, I think it's important to get them done. And thank you for picking up the framing, because I know that can be expensive. Other questions? No, no question, Mr. Chairman. Just a, a statement. Um, so glad to see this come to fruition. Uh, they're great, great pieces of Nantucket history, and uh, I'd be glad to see them finished. Mm -hmm. Really special to watch. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was really very pleased with what was done before because mm -hmm. this is year four of, of your applications in terms of the process that we worked through 
uh, and the previous ones uh, have lived up to the, uh, the promise of, uh, uh, that you made to us. And maybe to the new members, we asked the FBM to, to chop it up because it came for the whole thing. And, yeah, you know, it's I in see there. that, yes. Yeah. It's so been that's, you know, they've been real good the about three. knowing that our funds are right. limited. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Any other information? Uh, well, then, uh, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, welcome again to Nantucket. Thank you. Uh, I, enjoy, I enjoyed the lunch you and I had with Tucker. <laughs> to, I think it was the second day that you were on the job. <laughs> Turned out to, very fortuitous that we ran into each other. But uh, uh, please keep up. Uh, you, you have a, uh, a very difficult person to follow in terms of, of the, uh, the legend of Molly uh, on Nantucket. Uh, so uh, uh, best wishes to you in thank that. You. Uh, and uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Joel. You, you have been before us before, so you are aware of the process we'd asked you to, to, speak, take, to take uh, 10 or 15 minutes to flush out the uh, application that you have uh, and then open the floor to questions uh, from the uh, commissioners. Sure. So please, as in the past, this is being recorded, and we'd ask that you identify yourself. Sure. Uh, I'm Joel McIntyre, and my title at the church is uh, Clerk of the Vestry. Um, and, and before Joel starts, uh, I'm a member of St. Paul's Church. I sit on the vestry, but I have no financial interest whatsoever in this application. So, um, what this application is for is really a continuation of the restoration of the walls and, and tower of St. Paul's Church that we started back in 2016. Uh, at that point, we discovered that the mortar that holds all of the stones had deteriorated. Um, and that's a long story as to why it deteriorated and how long it took and so on. But it led to uh, moisture getting into the walls, particularly during nor'easters. And uh, the more moisture that got in, the more the mortar deteriorated. So with your help in, in 2016, um, we started the restoration of the tower. Uh, that was completed uh, again with your uh, assistance in 2017. Uh, we had hired uh, a, a contractor by the name of uh, uh, Fabio uh, Bardini, who uh, was, is really a, a master at restoration work. He understood uh, right from the very beginning what the problem was. Uh, we had a consultant who had come in and done the testing of the mortars, sent it out to be analyzed and so on. And he's the one that uh, recommended the contractor. Um, Fabio is, is uh, quite a character. Uh, uh, he is trained in the old school method of res using lime mortar uh, to repair both the bedding and the uh, pointing mortars uh, uh, in any of the stone work. Um, once he finished the tower, uh, we then brought him back uh, last year to do the west wall, which is the one that faces Fair Street, because we had found that the mortar had deteriorated uh, not only in the tower, but in uh, basically the other walls of the church as well. Uh, so we brought him back last year, uh, and the church paid for that from our own funds, uh, to, and he completely restored the west, uh, west wall. What is before you is a request to um, give us some assistance to repair the remaining two walls, um, the east wall and the north wall. Uh, fortunately, the south wall, which is the one facing the parking lot, uh, is in pretty good shape. There is one um, small area buttress area that's got a problem, uh, but that will be included as part of the east wall. So we're hoping to bring uh, uh, the contractor back this coming summer. 
Um, and we will do the east wall, and then in the following year, we will come back and do the north wall. That's the plan. Uh, at that point, the entire structure of the building should be um, completely restored uh, and preserved and according to According to Fabio, uh, it's going to be good for at least 100, if not 200 years. <laughs> so that's basically it. Uh, we are very thankful for your support in the past. Uh, it's helped us restore this building, which uh, we think is a historic uh, landmark on the island. Uh, it serves a number of purposes. Um, we are doing a lot uh, of community work, the, 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 the church building and our associated buildings are used by a number of community organizations, um, Nantucket uh, Island area, Narcotics Anonymous uses the buildings almost every day, um, the New Life Ministries uh, uses it several times a week. Um, we have, uh, this past uh, summer, we invited uh, the uh, Cornell University Chamber Singers to come. They were here for a week. We put them up at the church, we fed them, and they used all of the buildings for rehearsal space, and they gave two concerts, uh, one at the church and one at the African Meeting House, both of which were uh, not charged for, they were free for the community. Uh, in addition, we started a program last year, uh, which we call the Choral Scholar Program, where we bring in uh, youngsters, usually high school students, who uh, are interested in music. We um, uh, have them join our choir it's basically an ecumenical uh, uh, group, uh, although we do sing uh, at the services at the church. But these choral scholars get additional training, uh, musical training beyond what they get in high school, and we pay them for their time, both for the rehearsal time and for the singing time. And that has helped uh, uh, several of them uh, when they went on to college. We hope that this will be an ongoing program uh, for many years to come. Uh, what else can I tell you? Um, we talk a little bit about the, uh, the mortar problem. Uh, when the church was built in 1902, uh, they started construction in the fall and um, when they were actually constructing the building and, and putting up the stones and putting in the mortar, uh, it was in the wintertime. And that is one of the worst times that you can actually attempt to put mortar uh, in because it doesn't cure properly. It either freezes or what have you. And we think the fact that they were in a hurry to get the building built and worked over the, the winter time is what contributed to the, the mortar deterioration. Um, and we, uh, uh, the contractor that we hired uh, uh, as a consultant, Brian Pfeiffer, has done a lot of work on the island and he was really the one that put his finger on the fact that it was the mortar and not just cracks or leaks or something like that. And he actually sent samples of the mortar uh, over to a laboratory in Scotland uh, to have them analyzed. And, and apparently that laboratory is the one that is uh, well renowned uh, for being able to pinpoint what the problems were and also to do a chemical analysis to determine what the original mortar was. And then the contractor came back and suggested variations in that, which will hopefully uh, last a lot longer. 
the lime mortar that he is using is the old traditional uh, mortar that was used um, back to Roman times when they built the, the, all of the, the, I guess the Colosseums and, and all of that stuff which has lasted. And it was also used during the medieval times for the construction of the uh, buildings, uh, the cathedrals and so on. So, uh, and that lime mortar, once it's cured, actually breathes so that if moisture does get uh, into the stonework or behind it, it's able to come out through um, the mortar. So, uh, if, if you use something like Portland cement, uh, which is, of course, the mo much more modern uh, uh, derivation of, of the old lime mortars, uh, that becomes very brittle. And over time, cracks will occur in uh, Portland cement. And then, of course, when water gets in, the water freezes and cracks, and, and it goes down here. So, so uh, we, we're very hopeful that this old-time lime-based uh, mortar that he's using uh, will cure the problem indefinitely. To give you just a, a little more, more information about mortar than you really know, want to know the, the uh, what uh, Fabio has done is, is gone in and replaced the bedding mortar, which that's where the uh, stones meet one another. There's a little bit of gap because the stones are rough. So you push mortar in there, which makes a seal and, and makes a flat platform between the stones, which gives them stability. And then uh, the pointing mortar is the last uh, three quarters of an inch or an inch uh, of mortar that goes in after the bedding mortar is there. That's what you see as the, in the grooves between the stones. Uh, and that, of course, is colored to match the original um, coloration of the, of the building itself. Um, so it, when he actually went in and, and looked at some of the bedding mortar, it had completely deteriorated and was nothing but sand in there. And the stone, some of the stones were so unstable that he went in with wooden um, uh, wedges to hold the stones in place until he could get the bedding mortar uh, in there. So, Linda. Did you say that the um this amount will finish our restoration of the yes, it falls will. completely. Yes, it will. Because it's been, I've just got to say, it's been my project from the very beginning. I don't know how many years now. Um, and the stewardship and the care that they have given those windows, the tower, the rest of it that we paid for has been absolutely phenomenal. I've seldom seen this kind of care given to a historic structure than uh, what Dual has been able to affect here. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Do you want to tell them about what Fabio found relative to the uh, the person who made the windows at the at the on the Fair Street side of the church? Uh, yes, when when he was repairing the, the west wall last summer, uh, he put scaffolding up on on the inside and was able to get up uh, and look at you see the windows. The, see the windows up close. Because uh, he was doing repair work around the, the framing of the windows, and when he got up there, he saw uh, that um, Tiffany had actually signed one of those windows. Oh, wow! So his signature is up. Uh, mm -hmm. The very top, you can't really see it, but when you're up on the scaffolding, you can see that he, wow. Louis Comfort Tiffany signed it. Did, did he photograph that by chance? He did. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's he put cool. that little picture in the front foyer so yeah. people know. Yeah. They're that's not cool. all Tiffany's. There's another, there are two different that's people. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. But they're just yeah. spectacular. Well, oh, yeah. I mean, then the beauty of them is the fact that, that the symbolism is not religious. 
in the Tiffany windows. Good. They're just beautiful. Maria. Just one quick question, because I know before you said, and it's one of my favorite fillings, you had buckets of water inside. Is that better, or is yes. it going to be when the whole thing is done? Yes. It's better? Uh, it, it, it is almost completely cured. Great. During uh, Dorian, that we got the heavy rain for that, we did discover two areas where there was moisture coming in, but it was very small and you had to go up in the tower to find it. We've marked those and when Fabio comes back this summer, he's going to repair it. Well, you, had, uh, you had a lot of trouble with the tower. That was your, oh, yeah. I remember the buckets oh. in the front hall. Yeah, we, we, we That's had, how we started, right? Yeah, yeah we had, we had no, we started windows, windows, windows first. first. Uh, in, in the entrance. Yeah, in the entrance. The, the water was just streaming yeah. down. Yeah. And of course it rotted some of the floor and what have you. But um, what the, both Fabio and, and Brian Pfeiffer recommended was that we wait at least a year before we begin any of the repairs inside the church for just the just reason, reason that this happened, to make sure that, you know, if there is any leak, you can spot it, fix it, before you put any money into restoring the material. John. Uh, yeah, just, I, I think maybe some clerical um, clarification. On uh, page eight of the, uh, the application, yeah. it just shows the accounting. And for, I think maybe there's a couple little mix-ups with some well, numbers. In the middle of the page, east wall and short return on south wall, the numbers were 128,900. I think that was uh, up above. You'll see it's referenced as the wa west wall. I believe it should be the one lower, the east wall, for 125,700. Yep. So that changes a little bit, not much, maybe $3,200. And also the uh, contingencies, I don't, I'm not sure if we can factor in contingencies. No. So yeah. there would be the two 15% and 15% removed from the request to 255, 19,300 and also 13,900. Um, so just to get some accounting straightened out. Yeah. Uh, so also just for my clear, uh, knowledge, because I wasn't here, a yeah. real <laughs> new member in the last few meetings. Uh, but I noticed that in 2017-18, I know the Bell Tower had an original cost of 189500 or estimated cost. Yes. And it actually spiraled out to uh, $281,000 more than anticipated. Yes. So just looking at what the original um, you know the what the CPC grant had given was two hundred thousand. Correct. Uh, I see the church donated, or, uh, contributed eighty one thousand one hundred. So it looked like at that particular time that really spiraled out where the CPC would have given twice what they were going to be originally estimating for. If well, we applied for two separate grants. We applied in two thousand sixteen for a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. and that was granted. Came back in 2017 for another hundred. Okay, that clarifies the 200. Great. Yeah. Okay, thank and you. I knew this just, was going to be a multi year project. Yeah, no, I know. I just wanted to clear, you know, when you don't have all the numbers right and it looks like there's, you know, there's 22,003, it looks like the original is off by about $25,000 yeah. with the contingencies and also the, the mix up in the west and the east wall. So yeah. would it be helpful for them to give us just a different so just, Yeah, just, 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 just there's revise just too many, you know, take, 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 a few things on here that I noticed. I just yeah. want to clean just it so that re when we re vote on it. Reducing it so that, that, that the contingencies exactly. are out and the correction that John pointed out. Great. That, so, that's easy to do. Yeah, and if okay. you can get that to us before the end of next week right. by email to Glenna, that would be great. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you, Dool. Yeah, what I tried to show on this sheet, sheet was, uh, in, in the simplest terms, what the estimated cost was, actual cost was, how much the CPC grants were, and how much the church paid for it. Yeah. Um, so to pick up kind of on, on the financial point of that, when we're all done at the end of the drill in 2021, does it... Would it be fair to say that the CPC is probably a 75% funder of all of this stonework? Probably, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And the handicap access and then that <coughs> yeah. and everything else. Yeah. That'd be about right. Yeah. And uh, just to follow up on that, I think it's a great project. Uh, 
I have no no concerns whatsoever. I was just curious what Fabio's assessment was of the new addition that you put on. Is the mortar and everything done in that in according with what you're doing now? Yep. Uh, no, the, the new addition uh, used a more modern um, uh, mortar and he indicated, Fabio indicated that in years to come we may have to go back and do the same thing. Uh. He was saying it's like 50, 75 years before you're going to have to cross that bridge. Well, you'll be on the case. I want you to. <laughs> <laughs> it was a struggle enough to get the to get the stone. I was up in it several times while they were constructing it on the, you know, final It's a magnificent addition. Tim, Tim, do you know that we, what was really incredible was that the work that was done is they found the same uh, um, foundry. Yeah. foundry yeah. And so the stone is from the same, for it's the new addition, it's is from the exact yeah. same foundry that, had, that uh, gave the original stone yeah. for the church. That it's was down in Connecticut, wasn't it? Uh, it was in Connecticut, and the, the way we found it was we, we took a chip uh, yeah. off the stone, and one of the folks went up to that area, wherever it was, the, to the quarry, and the, and the quarry, they asked around the town, the quarry was closed, but they said, Typical New England fashion. Go down the street and talk to Joe. Because <laughs> he used to work there. So our guy went down and knocked on the door, and Joe came out and he said, showed him the piece of stone. He said, Do you know where this came from? He said, yeah, of course I know where it came from. He told him what it was. And he said, Is can you get any more of it? He said, Oh well. The original quarry closed, but if you go to this one down the, the road, it's the same vein mm -hmm. that runs underneath it, and you can get some. It's, it's a weird pink stone, sort of pink. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it, it's an incredible addition. You'd never know it's that it didn't all seem in that one. It's, it's, you know, it's just beautiful. Great. You know, I grew up in that neighborhood and walked back and forth to school by that every day, and I used to think that wall in front by the sidewalk was yep. taller than Mount Everest. I couldn't see over the top of it. <laughs> That's oh. a magnificent building. It's, it's one of the very building. few stone buildings in town. Mm. Yeah. 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 I just think it's, it, the, the stewardship of this congregation, the stone on this church, is just phenomenal. Yeah. Well, well, we, we have a, another project that we're getting into. It has nothing to do with restoration or anything else, but um, as, as you may know, we have uh, an organ, as do three other churches on the island. Well, the organ crawl. That are uh, tracker organs, yep. meaning that they're mechanically linked. Uh, they're not electronic. And these were the old types of organs. And what that means is when you, when you press down on a key, there's a, a rod that goes back and that's what opens the valve that lets the air into the pipe. And every time you pull a different stop on there, it changes the alignment of those things. So it's a, 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 a wonderful old way of uh, creating music. And what we're hoping is to um, create uh, an organization that will maintain those organs across the island, huh. and um, hopefully we will get some recognition that uh, Nantucket might be a historical musical site because of the, the tracker organs mm -hmm. in the one spot. Now that's just in the very beginning stages. We're still planning it, uh, but uh, it has nothing to do with individual churches. Mm -hmm. It's all about a tracker organs oh. and trying to You should apply for that next year. We're, we, uh, we're working out the details because this, we're hoping to establish it under the Community Foundation uh, and we've met with them to talk about it, but we need to flesh out uh, how you maintain these organs and, and how each one gets its fair share of whatever funds are raised for. Because St. Paul's restored their organ about four or five years ago. We did, yes. Yeah. And I think we did our Saint old Mary. vestry at the Congo Church. But yeah. that one yeah. up in the loft yeah. in the main church is yeah. the same. And yeah. It's, 
we have to be really careful because the cold hates it. Yeah. Yeah. And we have to be really careful yeah. um, at Christmas. And if you ever watch someone trying to play the organ, that's why you have very often uh, more people sitting at the organ in terms of pulling out all the stops. Yeah. Because you're not only playing it with your hands, you're playing it with your feet, feet. Mm -hmm. yeah. as well. So. Well, I've watched that one in the, in the loft at the, the summer church at the Congo many, many times sitting right next to it. And it's yeah. fascinating, but it's like multiple things are going. And it's that the sound that comes out of these versus the newer organs is just yeah. stellar compared yeah. to the, uh, the new ones. I think that's a fabulous idea. Now. I think you need to come back here. For those. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's another attempt to... Yeah. to uh, preserve the historic, something that's historic yeah. in Nantucket. Yeah. Um, as far as we know, on the, on the research so far, there are a number of tracker organs around the country. Many universities or colleges have them because they were created back from the back colleges the and universities who were maintained. But nowhere is there such a concentration of them as there is on the island. Well, that kind of tells you how much wealth was around here back then, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, uh, it, 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 it was, and yeah. you know, I'm sure the whaling captains, yeah. and, you know, people, <laughs> yeah, somebody come knocking on the door and say, Our church needs a new order, okay, you know. <laughs> yeah. but uh, it's it's uh, if that comes to pass, that will really tie together uh, again the historic. Yeah. Uh, foundation of, our, of many of the buildings on the island. So. Come back to that. Any other questions for Joel? So then just uh, a revised... Uh, yeah, the uh, financial. Revised financial. financial. I think if my math is correct, the revised should be 218700 okay. That removes the, uh, the two contingencies, contingencies and also corrects the difference between the 128900 and the 125700 Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank, thank you very much. much, and thank you for the history lesson mm -hmm. and the masonry lesson. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Michael. Uh, you have been here before in different capacities, uh, so you are aware of the process. Uh, we ask you to take five or ten minutes to uh, explain, flush out the uh, application, and then open the floor to questions. And we'd ask that you uh, start by identifying yourself, but before you start, I want to indicate that I am the chairman of the board of the Nantucket Preservation Trust, but I have no financial interest in this transaction. Michael? Great. Uh, I am Michael May, executive director of the Nantucket Preservation Trust, um, and we are working on this um, application um, with a couple partners, um, the University of Florida Preservation Institute, um, and um, also um, um, with, with the with the town in the sense that um, they, they asked us to um, work on this program project was part of a work group with the uh, um, street <coughs> and sidewalk study uh, with the Department of um, Public Works. And actually I do have a, an addendum that I would like to pass around, just a, um, a letter of support from Rob Neal. Um, he wasn't able to get us a copy in time for the application. Um, but um, we, so we are doing it in, um, with, yeah, with, uh, with, with Robbie Neal's assistance. Um, and, the, and the project um, is something that I know that everybody probably knows a lot about. Um, you know, the historic uh, streets, especially in the old historic district, are something that we wanted to um, make sure that old material um, remains as much as possible. And so we wanted to identify that, but also we understand that the sidewalks are des in desperate need of, of repair. So uh, we wanted to work with the town and, and develop it a, a plan. And um, what came out of the work group with um, the public works um, director was that we need to figure out what we, we have. And so we thought the CPC grant would be the ideal place to have, uh, to, to, to do this study, um, and, um, because the, the sidewalks are, are so quintessential in Nantucket, and we, you know, they're so important to not only our residents, but visitors come here um, um, because of that. Um, so we, so we thought uh, we would prepare this study, and it really, the goals are basically to document um, the streetscapes 
um, or the sidewalks, um, basically, and, and the, the elements that make up the sidewalks um, in the old historic district. And um, the University of Florida has come up with a, an app um, to help do that, um, which we will be testing out this spring. Um, that will um, actually, it's like a, sur a quick survey um, that will be done. Um, so that's a, a big part of it. Um, and then the, the documentation section would include laser 3D scanning um, that could be used um, by public works or other town um, agencies um, when they're doing work. Um, and so that's a, a big part of it. And also doing some arch archival research, just so we know what we're looking at. So um, if we can, we've done some preliminary um, research, but there could be more research, um, such as um, finding out when the flagstones were laid in, in the middle of, uh, of Main Street, that sort of thing. So we would know through not only um, historic research, but physical research, um, physical uh, survey, um, what parts should be um, preserved uh, as much as possible. Um, so, uh, and then we would, we, develop, we would develop a plan um, with, with the Public Works and other, um, the, the Nantucket Historical Commission, that sort of thing, a, a group would get together and develop a plan um, and priorities um, for the sidewalks. So that's basically the, the main um, goals of the project. Linda. When you throw around the word historic, you have to be careful. There were no sidewalks before, after the 1846 fire. Zip up. There was nothing. It was just the brick buildings, right. top and bottom. Right. There was nothing else. Yeah, I'm going to say most of the historic is probably late 19th, 19th century, yeah, early 20th time. century. Because when you um, go down Pine Street, Fair Street, and the little guys in between, there were no sidewalks. Right. It was all dirt. Right. And so we're talking more recent history. And, and the one, and the one, the houses that we know, <coughs> like on Main Street, um, above the bank, um, we know that a lot of the that slate, when those houses were built, those sidewalks were put in. Yeah. So there are, I mean, there are some like 1820, 1830, that sort of thing. The town center um, was also up there, the right. monument, not downtown. Right. So a lot of people don't right. know that. Um, <clears throat> you have to weigh, I, I've been following this whole thing with um, the sidewalks and uh, cobblestones. Um, are you confining your research to just the Sidewalks, or were you going to talk about the cobblestones relaying and all that stuff? Is that part of this whole it's, thing? It's really just this, the uh, right now the um, the sidewalks mm -hmm. and the you know the elements of the sidewalks, the, the curbing, um, the brick or the, the slate, the, or whatever whatever is there. It varies there. as you go up the right, street. Right, right. And we will address some issues because um, it, it has come up. Like I know that there's a lot of hitching posts in town that are probably new. Yes, they are. <laughs> and um, we want to we would want to identify if there are any historic ones, that sort of thing. So I mean, there's different. Um, there are very few historic right. ones right. because you have the pictures, like right. I have the pictures. Right. Very few historic hitching posts right. because that's not what they did. Right. There used to be a, a mounting block on Main Street mm -hmm. when I was a kid. You know, you find the mounting blocks, right. but people took them out and then stuck those stupid little black horse head things mm -hmm. where they did it in front of our house on Union Street just to keep people from parking right. there. Right. So, and there's, if you go up on Darling and those streets, the people are lining the streets with those mm -hmm. things and none of them, the DPW refuses to do anything about taking them out. We've had this argument with them about the ones on Union because they were not on Union, ever. So there's, a, if you're going to get involved with those stupid hitching posts, then by all means, take them out. Because they're not historic at all, and then they destroyed the brick. They just broke the brick, putting them in, and they threw the brick away. Yeah, and I think that, I mean, I think that's part of the survey. It will provide some of those answers, and then the town, for the town to be able to determine what kind of plan to go, to go forward. Take them out. I mean, I'm sure you have to also consider the new handicap accessible mm -hmm. apparatus or whatever. I mean, sometimes with Nantucket, it's a little problematic. But mm -hmm. The brick down by, um, when you go into the stop shop downtown, that little area, I mean, now that you're, I'm walking on it, I can see that it's better. I don't know if it's aesthetically, if everybody loves it, but um, if you 
have a mobility issue in the Nantucket, it, it's still real problematic getting around. Well, path of travel is something that the DPW is working on because I was on the Commission on Disability for 28 years and we paid, we paid for the crosswalks in town and the cuts and the curbs. The state law is if you start messing around with sidewalks, you must make that intersection handicap accessible. So they don't have a choice, but over the years, they have messed around with the sidewalks and the cobblestones, especially above the bank, and not put in the required handicap ramps. So I think all of that's getting addressed now um, because they have somebody that actually pays attention to that stuff at the DPW. But it's required. They don't have an, they don't have an option. So if they mess with a sidewalk or an intersection, they have to make it a, a completely handicap accessible. So that's why we're seeing a little bit more ramping going on mm -hmm. and fixing the ones that have this much of a curve in front of the ramp or a telephone pole in front of the ramp. Look at Easy Street. So there's a lot of stuff that has to be rectified. And you know, it's not that every, all the material is historic. You know, and I think that's the yeah. goal of the survey is to identify those areas, those high priority areas that should be preserved. Path of travel is kind of critical. And smooth travel, because as you know on Main Street, if you're sight impaired or you tend to shuffle, you're not going anywhere without falling down. Mm -hmm. John? Uh, yeah, just a question of curiosity. Uh, when inventory and identifying map streets, streetscapes, et cetera, uh, are there any below grade um, streets that you're aware of that have been paved over? That have cobblestone or Belgian block or something like that. There, there, there are. I mean, I you know it's funny. I was um, I was doing research yesterday, and there was a whole list of the cobblestone streets. Yeah. Um, um, so, uh, I, I mean, I think that's something that that research that will come out. More research will come out of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think a lot of people know which ones we are. And, and yeah. DPW. Has North Water Street was completely paved when we were kids. They yeah. pulled up that macadam, and those were underneath it. Um, lower. India Street was paved and they pulled up the macadam there. So there are various streets that they, it didn't come out of the ballast of a ship, so let's get that off the table. Yeah. It came from a quarry up near Boston. So Is that right? People, yeah. People like to say that they came out it was of the ballast. ballast yeah. If they were the ballast of those whale ships, those whale ships, not even with those air pontoons, could have gotten in this harbor. <laughs> <laughs> and the ship would have sunk. And they were full of oil. But, yeah, they they but <laughs> in, depending on the age that they were put in there, they're still historic. Whether they, they get them from Boston from, or, or right. England. But they didn't come from the ballast yeah. of the ship right. at all. It's a so good, it's these good stupid little things story. people like, yeah. it sounds great when you're doing a little yeah. history tour with Aaron. <laughs> but otherwise, it's not working that way. Right. But those, there are streets that still have them underneath there. I hazard a guess that the at least the front part of uh, Fair and Pine may have them. And maybe Liberty Street going right. on next to the bank. Right. But there are other little streets after the fire that they said, well, <laughs> now putting mud back. <laughs> Maria. Just one other thought, because every time I drive around, it's, I assume that they're going to, when they do work, it's going to be after Comcast and the electric company and all these other companies come in with their, we need to. A late project with the electric. Everybody needs to do it at one time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that. Uh, Liberty Street's, I mean, North Liberty's going down. I think now. that's the, I mean. That's, that's the goal. That's right? the goal of the report to provide the information so that then they can identify areas and then it's the town, it's the town to Negotiate determine how to, how to work. How yeah. a better yeah. sequence of, okay. Tim. Michael, has this uh, project been on the drawing board for a while, or is this a direct result of what happened on Lower Main Street? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it, um, it's, it's a new project. It's something that came out of really the work group with the DPW, um, because I think there, was a, there is a willingness in, in the town to make sure that you know, when we repair the sidewalks, it's done properly and um, with you know, good preservation um, practices, and that's something that Rob wants to do. But he's, he really wanted, he turned to us and said, well, I need that information from you. So this is something that we feel we're doing as a service for the town to, so they can better plan. Gotcha, uh, okay. Yeah. Remember, they had like at least four or five um, community forums about fixing the cobblestones and the sidewalks above the bank because they were going up and down hill and trees and mm -hmm. you know, they didn't take the roots out when they cut right. the trees down and it just it got into a delay, 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 mm -hmm. argument, argument, argument. 
So I think that probably came out of that whole thing, is how do we do this orderly and get a, a full survey of all the downtown roads? Right, so also be it like an emergency route, McNeil he needs to rip up the street, he knows what he needs to put back. Right. So that's basically right. another right. thing, a little blueprint. Right. It's, the I mean, right, it's the right brick and the right flag yeah, right. That's the problem. Right. They well, like don't they, always get the right brick, and they get the orange brick right. that's in front of the uh, Congan and Coleman. And it's really identifying those areas that are <clears throat> critical. You know, if there's a really early material, he'll know that, and he'll, he'll be careful with that, and he'll yeah. have the documentation of how it looked, where how it was placed exactly. So. It needs to be put back, it could be put back exactly. Yeah, so. like the you, yellow brick beyond the Civil War Monument yeah. is completely different. Right, different. You know, that right. was much newer. But if you look in front of what really started the conversation that we had with um, Rob McNeil when he first got here, is when they went and replaced the flagstone, or we set it in front of the Macy Warehouse. The joints are this big. It's just stone dropped into a vat a bat of cement. And so we brought them around and we said, no, the joints on these things were very narrow and not two inches Half wide inch. set in concrete like it's a modern thing. Mm -hmm. So he learned his lesson from that and decided that you know he really needed more help with how the joints, you know, how wide were they set, what were they set in, that kind of thing. Because he said he promised me he would never do that again. <laughs> it's flat, it's great, but he would never do that again because it looks like hell. Well, there's also uh, a recognition on the part of the town that part of the attraction from an economic point of view for Nantucket is its historical significance. Yeah. And so the fact is, is that how you marry the need to address the ADA compatibility with doing as best you can to maintain the historic character of the community that people are coming to visit and spend dollars in is really important. And so I think that that, that, that understanding is something that's, that is probably much clearer now than it might have been in the past in terms of the interrelationship. And we don't want to be known as being inaccessible, and we have been for many years. You get off the High Line, but you can't get to Main Street because that path of travel up that road, up that sidewalk, used to be impossible. Okay. Michael, just one last question. When you're done with this survey, will this be something that you can turn into a GIS layer for yeah. the town as a in addition to 3D modeling? Right, that's part of, that's part of it, that it will be um, something that um, the town, different agencies can, can use. Um, and then there will be a, a report too. So there'll be something physical and then there's you know, the, the internet too on the G interface. Yeah, yeah. So would there be like an architectural standards as well? As like yeah, the was, uh, yeah. and that, I think that would be part of the, the final report that we, we would give recommendations. Um, and that's something that we would you know work with a, a group of people on. Um, I'll tell you, the, the most glaring thing was going down Union Street some years ago because the the they used to the DPW used to leave it up to the individual homeowner to do the sidewalk in front of their house. So some used the orange brick, some used macadam, some had concrete, some had the wrong brick, some had the right brick. So you were going this patchwork going down the um, west side of Union Street in particular. It was ridiculous. So then so the no DPW, like there was, it was, it was stupid. <laughs> yeah, right. But then, that, then they were giving them, they had enough of the brick, the SNH, I guess it is. Mm -hmm. They had enough of the SNH piled up out there. So they would give you the brick to do the sidewalk in front of your house so it would be you know, more consistent. Mm -hmm. Then they stopped doing that. And it was like, okay, where am I gonna get that brick? I'm not, I'm gonna put in whatever I want. And the town paid no attention to that. They didn't make them take it up. They didn't make them do it right. There was no accountability. There was no prescribed way of doing it. The DPW didn't enforce it. And that's why we have yeah. all over town, you will see this. But yeah. it really, it's necessary to get some sort of a grip on this. Yeah. I think, every, I think, I think all of the parties are on board the preservation. Of the same page now? The, the, well, public works, the town yeah. in general. Yeah. You know, I think they, they understand and everybody's work, trying to work together. We realize that you know you have to improve and you have to have ABA and that sort of thing, but um, historic material is also important too. Yeah. Any other questions of, of Michael at this point in time? No. Do we we don't need any additional information from him, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, so I am the co-chair of the South Church Preservation Fund regarding right. the unitary meeting house. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah.
Thank you for accommodating our change of time oh. uh, because of the our fact pleasure. that, that uh, um, we try to juggle stuff around. Um, so uh, what, uh, as an organization, you've been with us before, mm -hmm. and so what we'd like to do is to uh, uh, have you uh, take a couple of minutes to flush out the application for us. Uh, but first, identify yourselves, uh, mm -hmm. then flush out the application, then open the floor to questions. Uh, and uh, uh, it is videotaped and uh, recorded, okay. so we'll put you on notice. So well, like please proceed. Can... Uh, begin on the on the first page and, and, and identifying oh, yourselves first. I'm sorry, I'm yeah. Barry Langley, yeah. uh, co-president of the South Church Preservation Fund. I'm Paul Stewart. I'm just outgoing president. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. And still a board member. Okay. okay. Good. Okay. So on the on the first uh, page, I just wanted to bring your attention to. The two most recent um, oh, grants yeah. that we received from you. Uh, one was for uh, $93,068 for a uh, window replacement. Um, that was uh, what we had. Uh, uh, is, this, is this the window? No, this is for the, I'm sorry, this is for the lighting. And uh, it looks like we're going to be returning or not using about 36000 of that. The project's done. We're just waiting for the final bill from mm -hmm. Ryder. And um, um, we were able to do uh, a lot better in uh, costs on design and installation than we had originally thought. Terrific. And so, so when that is finished, what we will need uh, just a letter from you to mm -hmm. me as chair through to Glenna indicating that you are uh, that your project is completed mm -hmm. uh, and that you're relinquishing that so they can go back into okay. um, uh, res designated reserves for historic preservation. And we'll have that by the 9th um, for your board meeting on the 15th. Okay. okay. So that, Thank should you. Be, that should be done. Perfect. And just to let you know, the uh, we had asked for um, uh, $99,000 to do all window uh, rehab um, of all the triple hung windows. Uh, you gave us 45000 uh, It came in at 49000 so we paid that difference. And this year, so it only was uh, allowed us to do half the window. So this year, we're going to do the half on our own, the other half. Um, I just want to okay. let you know. So that the windows will be completely renovated um, by the uh, beginning of next year. Uh, sometime in the spring next year. Okay. And then I'll turn it over for Paul. So we have uh, pretty much a tight building. All the windows have been renovated. The lighting's been in. We have a roof that was put on. And uh, this is looks to be one of our final projects that we'll, we'll be asking. Painting done, the bell Painting. done, all that stuff. Yeah. The dome. Cool. It's been a, been a long uh, process, and you guys have been extremely helpful in uh, supporting that. Um, if I could draw your attention to these pages toward the yeah. front, okay. um, pages six and seven. So we had painting done mm, a while ago that uh, was oh so appropriate and recommended and so forth, and it yellowed almost immediately. Hmm. Um, and we've been doing some work with Sherwin Williams to. Um, they had one of their people come over here and diagnose the situation. They suggested a uh, primer and finish coat that would cure the problem. We applied it to a small section, then we applied it to the entire bottom, which is why you can see the yeah. sort of the two-tone look here. Mm -hmm. um, and that bottom section has been there for several years now and has held up much better. Um, so it's come time to do the entire building. Um, Gary brilliantly uh, got a person with a drone to come and take some of these photos. The, um, this one here is a good one, and this one here are both photo pictures from the drone. Um, and they sort of show the, the loss of paint in certain areas and the little cracks that need to be worked on this and that. We don't notice a whole lot of repair work that needs to be done, but we just know there is some, and there'll probably be some more. Um, so the proposal before you is to um, 
do whatever minor repairs are necessary and paint the entire structure on the exterior. Including the part on the bottom? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Start over. Yep. Okay. We want it all to, to be of a piece, to be, uh, look the same. If you look from the harbor, you don't really see the bottom, but if you look anywhere from the street, it's very obvious how, how two-tone it is. Um, so in a nutshell, that's the, that's the proposal. Um, we've been working with uh, Adam Zanelli, who's very familiar with the building, um, and he's been our main source of uh, suggestions on this and um, bids. So, so I'm open to questions or yeah. whatever else you'd like to hear. Just to add to that, his, his bid, Adam Zanelli, gave us a bid for the painting and scaffolding as one, as one bid. And Andy Bennett gave us, um, he had a tour of the building, and you'll see later in those proposals some of the, the areas that uh, have deteriorated already that he's identified for repair. So we have a quote from Adam Vanelli and page 18. page 18 is just some of the areas that we surveyed with Andy. Um, some areas that need to be repaired before painting. And so he, we have a quote in from him on his rough estimate of what he thinks, based on the condition of the building, what repair might be needed. Um, it's difficult until you get up into this, on the scaffolding, of course, to look at it um, exactly. I should probably mention the fact that um, I mean, we can't ask you guys to support something that we don't know what it is. So SEDF is proposing that once the scaffolding's up, we'll have to handle, and we will handle, the uh, other repairs that are revealed at that time. If it exceeds to the pull from Andy, that so, will take care of uh, whatever else comes up when you're on site. Questions? Yeah. We've done everything on the building yep. <laughs> for quite a while. Absolutely. Um, once we do this, the, the Congo church, our church, had the same problem. It got painted, it was rotten, they had to come back, as some of the members here were here back then. Uh, they had to come back and redo the painting there, and redo the scaffolding, the whole nine yards, because whatever they did to the outside caused wa rotten water. So you're pretty confident that this, is, this painting scheme is going to work on the, the church, and it's not going to hurt the wood or start to rot. Because we spent a considerable amount of time and money on the inside and getting the Trump oil back to what it was, you know, 100, 200 years mm -hmm. ago. It's fantastic. The last thing I want to do is see the outer envelope compromise what's going on on the inside, as it had for many years. Is this the last thing on the church? Because we're pretty much finished with the Methodist church now. Yeah. Um, is this the last part of getting this church whole again? We know of no other projects that we will be coming to you for in the near future. Okay. Um, and one of the reasons that we've taken several years to do the work with Sherwin Williams and, and actually try it out was just what you said. We don't want to incur a large expense, and this is a large expense, um, to um, do it if it's not going to work again. So. That's why we've, we've done the experiment. We've had it up there for several years, and it's doing fine. Well, I just like to finish projects that we start. And boy, well, we, the tower we looks pretty rough. <laughs> <laughs> really rough it's, in the drone. It's in good physical shape, i got to say. From the inside... The bones are good, but it's just... Yeah, yeah that's exactly it. Shaving it, off. <laughs> right? And the, those louvers. I, until we got the drone pictures, I wasn't quite as conscious of the louvers being... Well, they take a beating because okay. it gets hit right. by every single oh, storm absolutely. that comes in there. And it's really, I mean, the bell is in open air up there. So yeah. those louvers are, you know, they're just open to the right. elements. I, I was just curious, Sherman Williams with this yellowing, did they say it was the yeah. particular Nantucket thing, or was it their chemical? So Sherman Williams was not the uh, origin of the paint that yellowed. They're the, they're the origin of the white lower section that's our test test attempt, so they don't get, they get credit for the, the good part, not for the crummy part. We had a, um, a company that was extremely historically oriented. They recommended a boiled linseed oil based paint and um, the 
All the critters on the Nantucket seem to love Lindsay yeah. Carell. They love Lindsay <laughs> Don't you? Know. Who's, 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 who's bad there? advice? Don't go. Um, we went right back to the company to say, what'd you do? And they were out of business because every single person that they had done it for was after them. And they said that this was the solution, their pain at the time was the solution to the molding, yellowing problem. <laughs> and it created it. I mean, yeah. literally yeah. within a year or something. It was pretty disappointing. Adams and I said, it's the only job I don't want to take credit for. <laughs> <laughs> John. I was just curious, uh, Sherman Williams, um, is there a reason why something like Benjamin Moore that's uh, predominantly used on the island through a lot of the painting contractors that's supplied here? Um, yeah, with the, lighting, with the lighting contract, we don't stop once we've made the proposal. We actually keep going. Um, we're looking at two other scaffolding companies, and we would certainly, uh, Gary's already been down to talk to Marine Home about their, their recommendations. So we know the Sherwin Williams works. I'm not sure we would go again with a oil paint, mm -hmm. um, but no. we're still trying to right. refine this. Um, so what we would do is, uh, based on the outcome of this uh, proposal, is to continue our research because we're not actually going to be painting until next uh, a, a year from now, uh, next October or September, and um, we intend to do some much more thorough research on the paint even the difference between the oil and the latex. So I've got, already got confu uh, contradicting uh, ideas about that. <laughs> so we have almost a year to try to really nail down what it is that the, the best possible um, painting situation for this building. And you'll be doing samples on the building of yeah. swatches to right. see which... Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we have confidence because we've done the Sherwin-Williams Mm -hmm. um, process. We did it on the far side where you can't see it in these photos, but and then when that worked for a couple of years, we put it on as high as the ladders could reach. What you see there is yep. how tall can the ladders go, <laughs> um, and let it sit there for probably five years now, six years. Mm -hmm. um, that so, was a good test. So it's it's done pretty well. Um, but again, that's not the end of our. Uh, yeah. research on painting. Yeah. I, I would encourage you, uh, we f have funded, as you can imagine, a lot of painting projects. Mm -hmm. uh, the two that come to mind that I think you should maybe talk to their folks would be the Antonym and the Congregational Church, because mm -hmm. they've had, uh, they they're in the same them. boat, where, you know, a lot of wood, yeah. Um, yeah. and uh, so I would encourage you to talk with them and see what their history has been. And I have a call already into the Congo yeah. Church. I think, <laughs> I think uh, the second question I have for you is, could you consider breaking this into some smaller portions? In the event that we can't fund the whole request, uh, could you think about phasing? I looked at, actually, if you think about the tower as distinct from the body of the church, mm -hmm. it's really a separate structure. In fact, it was replaced 20 years after the whole thing was built. They had a, after the bell had been up for a while, the tower was getting a little rickety and they replaced the tower. Um, so it's 20 years younger than the 220 that the rest of it is. Um, but if we had to just do a part, I would suggest we just do the tower. Um, in a sense, you can get, if you look at how high the ladder reaches, it almost reaches the top of the, um, the body of the church. Um, so I feel like if we had to do just one part of it, we would do the tower. Unfortunately, that's the bulk of the scaffolding cost. Right, right. Um, so it would take care of any repairs, any work up there, and um, we've had no problems with the body of the church, as you say, it's got a, a lot of expensive plaster in there, and so we're very conscious about ex inspecting the roof and that. Um, but well, yeah, if, if we had to phase it, we would phase it as tower first. And, and Paul, just to clarify, uh, on page six, you, you uh, consider the tower to be down to what point? All the tower, all the tower structure, which includes all the way to the ground, mm -hmm. okay? But I mean, when you do scaffolding, you got to scaffold from the right. sidewalk up. Yeah. You know, so we would do that whole thing at once, but we wouldn't have any scaffolding around the body of the building. 
the backyard. No, I meant how far down would the tower go? Down oh, to the bottom of the clock or oh, down to this square oh, the next the section? The whole thing. We're going to scaffold the whole thing. We're going to yeah, do all the work. Yeah, we're going to scaffold Just continue the paint oh, from. I see what you're saying. That's yeah. this whole. Okay. Yes, this is yeah. rectangle part. I'm thinking yeah. of just. The, yeah, yeah. I'm more thinking, the, thinking the four sides. Yeah. 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 yeah, if you had to. Yeah. Linda? For those who weren't here before, we've had this scaffolding discussion multiple times, oh, yeah. particularly with the church before when you were working up there, mm -hmm. and the Congo Church. That's one of the biggest expenses. Of course, I know. And if you if they do the scaffolding in stages, that's it's a big expense every single time, which is what the, we spent quite a bit of time on the Congo. That's church. not what I'm asking, though. Linda. There's I know. four sides. I know to, to break it up, but if you have to come back again with the scaffolding on whatever church steeple we're dealing with, that's an extreme expense. So we yeah, we've no, had I'm to consider that, that before. No, that, 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 that's, that's understood. The, the, yeah. que the question is, is, is that we'd ask you to come back with, with a, uh, a, a revised number that if, in fact, uh, if you were going to divide the request into two parts, mm -hmm. how would you divide it so that it is efficient for uh, the best use of the funding that we could right. provide to you. Uh, it's so, in here already, if you look at it. Yeah, it says 21. Front, 21, front and tower is brought out, and the front and tower scaffolding is brought out, mm -hmm. which would be total about 309000 and change, and seven hundred and thirteen eighty four. But I think, um, honestly, I think rather than us, Tell you what the phasing yeah. should be. Mm -hmm. It should come from you. Yeah, sure. Uh, even though you have the information broken down, I, I I think we would love to be able to fund the project in total, mm -hmm. but we have a lot of requests. Sure. And, and the, the question for us is, can we? Mm -hmm. So if we can't, is there a way that we could? We just had the anthem in here phasing restoration of paintings. It's kind of the same approach with you. If we can't do it all at once, would there be a one-two punch that you could suggest to us that we might? Sure. We if can need certainly to. do that. And what's our time frame? Two weeks. Get, get us a, 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 a... By next end of next week. By the end of next week. The 11th. The 11th. The 11th. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Can do. And I would do... Can done, be done by email. Yeah, right, those two. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And we'll double check with, uh, with Adam to make sure we're... Yeah. Yeah. No, we yeah, want we, we, we yeah, 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 we want you to be comfortable with with what you're proposing to us in terms of how it could be broken up so that it works for you as opposed to us making a determination sure. that that <laughs> that is is not objective or right. doesn't take into consideration all of the relevant factors. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. The the same. Any yeah. other questions of uh, any of the commissioners? It's a great, it's a great building. Yeah, you guys yeah. have done a great yeah, job so is. far. No, every time I come in the harbor, <laughs> like, like, like the first kind of go on the one side, the second kind of go on the other side. When was the last time it was painted? Do you, do you remember the Lindsay oil? What do you have oh, a date for that? That was two thousand yeah, right uh, mid two thousand. Because we had the scaffolding up at that point. So you got about ten years, maybe, out of. Yeah, I mean, Before. it really, it started to go south I think almost it's immediately. Ten, yeah. 10 or 11 years on that yellow one part. Yeah. That was crazy. We watched yeah. that happen. Would you, could you also do just a summary for me, for us, of the uh, restoration that you've done, tying it in from the time that the CPC has made grants to you in terms of what we have provided by way of grants and, and by what the SPC, your, your uh, charitable foundation has provided in terms of your contribution to it so that we get a sense of the uh, relative uh, scale of, sure. of what we've done compared to what you've been able to do yourself. All right, we'll submit that with, uh, with the uh, revised. Yeah, uh, correct. If yeah. you want to know more of the details on what transpired and Gary doesn't call you back or they don't have the information, Glenna has the application from the Congo Church, the last one, that dealt with this painting thing a year or two ago I can't remember how long ago it was more recent and they detailed the whole painting problem what happened what it was who did it and all that stuff you can get a full look at what exactly happened in the Congo Tower Beautiful. so go pick that up over there that looks nice I hope I should stop by to inspect it with the eye of you know what can we learn yeah, yeah. it really looks good 
Well, it was good now, but at the turn of the last century, it was ochre colored clapboard and it was dark brown trim. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Well, thank you and, for your uh, time. And yeah, you're very you. welcome. Thanks. And thank you for all the good work you're doing with respect to a very important structure for this town. Well, looks like a bathtub ring around the church. <laughs> 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 we appreciate you being here. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Welcome. Please sit down Thank and uh, join us. You guys have been here before, so you know the drill. Yeah. Um, we would. Uh, uh, this is being videotaped and recorded. We'd ask you to uh, identify yourself. It's going to take five or ten minutes to sort of flush out the request and open the floor to questions from us as you have known we do in the past. Yes. <laughs> so mm -hmm. let's start. I'm Jason Leonardo Finger. I'm the MMA's deputy director of the Deputy Director and Curator of the Mitchell House Archives and Special Collections. I'm also in charge of all of the facilities at the MMA that encompass over a dozen sites, most of them from the 19th century. And this is? David Gagnon, Executive Director of the Moran Mitchell Association. And I actually counted the other day. We have 16 structures scattered about, so a lot of buildings. Oh. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. So our application um, this year is for our historic 1908 observatory on Vestal Street, um, and it's uh, attached 1822 astronomical study. Um, we were founded in 1902 um, and opened our doors in 1903. Everything started in the Mitchell House at 1 Vestal Street, um, the house that I carry, including an astronomy department. <coughs> And in 1906, we acquired um, one of, one of um, two of Mariah's telescopes that we own. And the impetus was to be able to um, use it in an appropriate site. Thus, in 1908, we built our um, observatory. And um, in 1922, realizing they needed a little more room, they added on the astronomical study, which has served um, as the offices for our resident astronomer who runs the astronomy program. Um, and our astronomer um, for the last few years has been uh, Dr. Regina Jorgensen, who actually was an astronomy intern with us many moons ago. Ha ha, moons. Um, <laughs> and, um, There'll be a few astronomical jokes <laughs> scattered throughout here. Um, in the summertime, we have six uh, astronomy interns who come to us through their research and education for undergraduates program. Um, and so we are actively using that observatory for research and for public outreach. It's also used for programs for those students, island students, um, including students from the public schools and the uh, Lighthouse School and the new school come to do projects and have tours um, with Regina. We've also had island teachers who have done programs with us in the past, um, one of whom was um, awarded uh, I'm not going to remember the exact name of it, but for their work through the uh, AAAS, um, for the work that they had done with Vladimir Stolnitsky, who was our astronomer, um, two astronomers before Regina, and was actually Regina's, um, the director when Regina was an astronomy intern. Um, so the work that needs to be done to our building is extensive. Again, it is from 1908 and 1922, and so we've been diligently working over the last few years to acquire Structural analysis, um, we've also, in many, many moons ago, I'm sorry, I can't help it, um, did a couple of uh, CAP assessments with an architectural conservator that we've also been using. Um, now, as I said earlier, we do have multiple buildings um, that we've gone to different entities um, to have help us with the work on our buildings. We feel that the Community Preservation um, Act and Community, Community Preservation Committee well fits with this building. It is iconic. Um, it is something that stops people in their tracks as they work, walk up the street. So it is an important part of the historic streetscape um, of Vestal Street. It is an important component of the Moriah Mitchell Association, and it's an important component to what um, the work that's done there, um, not just for astronomy and physics students, um, but also for island students and islanders as well. Um, so we do need a lot of work. Um, and working with a structural engineer um, who also worked on another pro two other projects for us. Um, more recently, the research center at the MMA's library, which um, CPC funded the exterior work to. Um, we've worked extensively with um, Wayne Morris um, and John Blotney, who's a structural engineer, and the two of them have a fantastic working relationship. So the work is to uh, it's hard to tell in some of the photographs, but um, there are steel lintels um, above windows and doors that have shifted. 
Um, there are some areas that you might be able to see in the photographs where the, where the building has, because of that, uh, the bricks have shifted and settled. Um, we have areas in the, in the cellar areas where the windows also have to have their lintels replaced um, because water has intruded over time. Um, and this is the kind of work that Wayne has already done with us on the research center and which John Watney, um, he is a structural engineer but he's focusing on historic buildings, has done a lot of work with. Um, and then we have a lot of um, grout that needs to be repaired, the parapets, the little castle-like piece on the 1922 edition, that needs to be addressed. So I've outlined that um, in, in the application as well as in the um, spreadsheets uh, about the work to be done. Wayne's work is the most expensive um, as far as what needs to be done because it is incredibly expensive of what needs to be done. Um, but we do have, the building is physically leaking. We do have buckets and places. And actually there is a picture um, in your packet of a blue area on the ceiling that actually has like a little cracking around it. Well, this, this summer it actually fell out. <laughs> um, and that's just from leaking and freezing and, and, and um, over time and then finally uh, popping off. Um, so it, it continues to deteriorate. We have done some work where we can, but again, this is an extensive project. Um, we also have some other things that need to be addressed. We'd like to try and do all the exterior so that then we can come into the inside and do the interior of the historic portions of the building. Um, and some of the other work for the outside includes removing uh, the, the, the ink, um, ink barrier that's in front of the building, potentially putting something back even that cut down more, but we're removing it so that Wayne can do his work. Then when the work is done, moving those back in, putting in some French drains to um, improve the drainage around the building, which we've already done some to. We've redirected downspouts and what have you. We have a challenge because the back of the building is on the property line, so there's a house on Main Street with its guest house that, that basically gives us about, oh, I don't know, maybe two feet space between the back of their guest house and the back of our building. Um, and then work to the original 1908 copper door. Um, somebody lovingly painted it in Hamilton blue many years ago, um, and <laughs> we need to get the paint off. Um, and then the windows um, need to be addressed. They are the original windows in the 1922 portion, um, and I did give you the measurements. They're, they're quite large, um, and they need to be um, reglazed um, and primed and painted, um, and also the trim on the building. So I'm not sure if you have any questions or if they want to add anything. But uh, Linda, go ahead. Linda. For those who've never been in that building, the observatory building, it's a fascinating little building. Mm -hmm. I've been up into mm -hmm. the dome, and it's you wonder how anybody could get up there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a fascinating building, and it's got a very distinct history on Nantucket because of Mariah Mitchell herself, mm -hmm. and she's saving the Methodist Church, or I'll have to blow her up with it. Um, did is the dome intact? The dome is intact. It actually um, was replaced about in 1945, but we have done work to the That's dome. That's what I thought. You, you can keep it up with the dome. dome. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you came before us last year. Yes. Was the cost about the same? I don't remember the answer. Yes, it was about the same. Um, we just didn't have enough money, and we might have the same problem this year because we've got twice as much to ask as we have capital. To give out. Is there, I think it's a well worth it to fix this building, and I, have, I said that last year. Um, is there a way, I, I don't see a way to parse this out. I'm familiar with Wayne's work because I believe he did Legion, mm -hmm. and we did one wall at a time at the Legion, but that was easy. We had the east wall, north wall. Coffin school, too, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah, we've done wall by wall. Mm -hmm. I don't know, and we had that problem last year, if it was possible to do this one wall by wall because of the intrusion of water pretty much globally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is I mean, there it's a, a way to parse this out? It's a small footprint of a building, actually. Yeah. So it's not a... But it's complicated because it's complicated. of all the... It's got all the tchotchke around the windows. Yeah. It's got the dome up there. Yeah. Um, parapets. I mean, it's, it's, it's small, but it's got a lot of complications on how to deal with it and right. fix it. Is there a way to break this down and do, the obviously, the street side? and maybe the back side as opposed to the east and west wall. Is there a way to, to break it at all so we can give you some money this year? Ideally, we would do it all at the same time. Right. I would need to Wayne to say what side would he do first, and John Watney to say what side would they do first, because both of them are doing this, pretty much the same exact thing. 
maybe the front only because it's it's Presents the obvious the way we're doing the yeah. work. My only fear is that the house that we uh, that was pushed up against on on Main Street is now for sale. <laughs> so my worry is that the next owner won't be as um, accommodating. Yes, because the other one's always like, oh, just knock on the door, I'm not home, just go back there. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get that anymore. So we might need to get him in to do the rear first, so that we don't have to worry. You know, I don't know what's going to happen with that. Well, if you can yeah. break it down to maybe the front and the back walls together, and then the east and west walls together. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can break it down at all. Um, that would give us a little wiggle room on that 313 mm -hmm. and then do it, come back again next year so we can keep going with the project. I'm just, our biggest ask this year are really historic preservation. That's the biggest group mm -hmm. we've yeah. seen in quite a while mm -hmm. as a group. So I'd just like to see if well, there's a way to, to break it so we can give you, get you going. Mm -hmm. Sure. Joe? So there are provisions in the Mass State Code that you are able to work on with people's property to mm -hmm. fix your yeah. property. So. Yeah. I mean, if you push them to shove. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I can't imagine someone saying you're in front of I'd rather not push them to shove. No, I know. I'd rather not push them to shove. You just want to be as good a neighbor yes. as possible. Yeah, right. um, because we have, you know, run into problems when people want fire pits um, behind the yes. territory. And <laughs> yeah. 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 No. Um, so, yeah, that's my, they just, you know, I saw it in the paper that it was for sale, and I kind of just went, oh, you know, just, it, we literally, like, multiple of our properties hit against this property. So, I mean, it's just like an alley yeah. back there. Right. Yeah. Um, it, it looks concise, and I like the breakdown of all the, the things. I was just thinking, in, uh, because in general, all of our historic buildings need so much maintenance. Once the building is where you guys want it, will you be able to have some provision in the budgets to have like a rainy day fund or you know, like if the Maybe furnace blows up, we gotta fix mm -hmm. it, or have some fundraising that just earmarks capital expenditures for maintaining the We have a preservation and repair budget for all of our buildings. Okay. It's okay. small, yeah. so that's why we come to ask for money. This is this is a once in a, a lifetime, I will be dead before anything um, has right. to be done on this building again. But this is a building that once it went up, Nothing was touched. Thanks. And also, you know, when they installed the iron lintels and they didn't realize in 1908 or 1922 that those were going to, if the leaks got in, it was going to rust and all that oxide yeah. jacking. So what we will replace it with will be steel that won't be doing that. Um, so we don't foresee, you know, yes, other things like once we get the windows back up to snuff, that's part of regular maintenance and will be part of our preservation and repair budget. And we budget it out. We do have, like, you know, a little pot where we say out of that budget, we know that a furnace can blow up, which we had happen in another yeah. building last year. Um, so uh, we know that we have that. And then we have, you know, e each building gets something done within our preservation and repair budget every year. But again, yeah, it's over a dozen buildings in the 19th century, so it is hard. Yeah. Um, to kind of pick up on that, um, I know how hard it is for you all with 16 buildings and no money. All kinds of demands. Mm -hmm. And I, maybe you could just comment, I, I noticed in some of the supporting documents you have here that contributions and grants is down substantially. And it's not just at Mariah Mitchell, I've noticed that on other applicants. Mm -hmm. Is that a trend that you see that's only going to exacerbate the problem? or? Uh, so actually our contributions, and I'm not sure, that those are the, um, uh, our contributions actually have gone up generally in the last four years. And our uh, grants, grants are a little tricky because you can get one big grant right. where 99% 90, of that grant goes to a particular project. So, um, like for instance, even even looking next year at our funding for the previous year, there was like two hundred thousand dollars that you we just got it. for the playground, right? So that money came in and came out. So if you go from that year to the next year, it's going to look like our grants are way down. When uh, for me, it's actually what percentage of those grants are actually going to help with our operations or overhead. And so I'd rather have fewer grants that covered more of that than bigger grants that, well, not rather, but you know, in terms of the finances, that's, yeah. that's the way it works. But our actual contributions have gone up on a contribution line item from uh, four years ago to from about 110,000 to almost 300, over 300,000, oh. so. Well, I, you, you know, I, I was just curious. See what you're on the 990, we don't have the luxury to look back for. You don't for. see, right, you I don't see, see the detail. I yeah. see prior year and current. Yeah, 
You know yeah. what I mean? So based on those two numbers, it yeah. looks like there's, and I, I noticed it with uh, one other group that was before yeah. us, and I thought, hmm, is that, yeah. I just, Well, I'll know. say even this year, the contributions have been much harder this year, and we can attribute it to a few things with the, uh, the new tax law that came into play, and our demographic for our giving is in that um, you know we get a lot of brand, a lot of donations in the five hundred to a thousand dollar range, and those are typically um, th those are at a point where they cannot take advantage of the tax deductions anymore in the same way that they used to be able to do. So when it was easier to give it you know five hundred dollars and make a difference in terms of your taxes, it's not that way anymore. The other thing, if you look to see where most of our donors come from, they come along. They come along from the East Coast, so Boston, New York, Connecticut, D.C., all high property tax states. So those folks have all been hit with huge increases in their in their um, yeah. lack of. Let's put it this way: their net at the end of the year because they can't deduct those anymore. So we were looking at. I'm hearing that from other people as well, and other organizations that. They didn't see the kind of contributions starting last year. We saw the same thing. Mm -hmm. It was just harder. And we had a big year. It last sticks year right out on the stuff. Like, yeah. 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 So it's that's, that's been a bit of a challenge. Cash. Yeah. Jason, I have two questions. Um, when I took a look at Wayne Morris's uh, estimate, uh, it's from 19, 2017. Yes. Uh, and uh, uh, the economics have, have changed. Uh, uh, on the island, uh, so is is this still uh, it's a signed current? Es it's right. a signed estimate, and Mr. Morris sticks with the signed estimate. Yeah. So. Okay, and and I would have thought that you that you would have included the engineering report to give us some sense as to. I did. Uh, I, I I didn't find it, so I mu I must have just missed it. I read the structures north stuff, but I, I just that's engineering report. That's yeah. structures north. Okay. Engineering report. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, it starts yeah. on page. Okay. I'm sorry, it's just after the letter. It starts in the back page. after after in section nine. Seven. Yeah. No. Okay. Seven. I, yeah. I just didn't read it properly, uh, but 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 the last question is is that that um, when when I, I read through the the items, it's uh, it's it's. Uh, Repairs, repairs, repairs in three separate areas of the item on page 61. Mm -hmm. And this Community Preservation Committee cannot deal with maintenance, can only deal with restoration. And so I need to uh, have it be clearly identified that what the funding request for is for restoration as opposed to maintenance and repair. It's not for maintenance and repair, it's for conservation work to the building. I use the word repair in there because it's a spreadsheet and I was trying to save space, quite frankly. But in throughout the document, I talk about the conservation of the building. If it was, if, as I said earlier, this is something that should not be touched until way after I'm, I'm dead. This is not um, maintenance and repair, it's conservation work. Just Protecting the building. Restoration. Research, research center. Restoration, yeah. pet, repair, protecting we the could, building. We'll be matching. Do we have an opportunity to change the wording on that just to be considered? Yeah, uh, you know. well, if you come back to us with, with, the, with a clearer definition of the proposed work so that, okay. that we're not subject to criticism for sure. approving something that is outside the scope of what we're allowed to approve. Right. And, and also, just for the record, I think contingencies with permits have to be removed from the $10,000. Yeah. I, I, I know you say on the fact that, that we have granted you money for contingencies mm -hmm. in the past. I, I, I need to correct you, yeah. and that is we have never done that in the okay. past. So, so, uh, yeah. so contingencies need so we'll to be removed. Yes. Yeah. Right. But, 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 but also, um, addressing Linda's point, to the extent that, that there is an opportunity for you to take a look at uh, if it could be broken up into uh, a phased approach yeah. to let us know that because that would be really very helpful. I, it doesn't mean that, that if we have enough funding we wouldn't do the entire thing, but right. if we have to be able to make decisions relative to the amount of monies available, we'd rather make it on the basis of a number that you say could work for you in terms of the project uh, on, a, on a scaled or a timed basis. Okay. We need that by next Friday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Email it to Glenna. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So a letter addressing that, and would you like me to change the wording on the proposed expenses spreadsheet? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. 
I just I, I, I need so to I need to I need to make sure that, that we are not that no one can make any suggestion that we have have gone outside the scope of what our authority is with respect to funding. Sure. Okay. Well, that's certainly our intent. So no, no, I'm, I'm not care. questioning your intent. Yeah, yeah. I am raising the words which no, which well, which raise a red flag from somebody that yeah. wants to challenge us. Yeah. Oh. I want to make it as easy as possible for everybody. <laughs> And what a great job you guys did on that park. Well, I wanted to we thank need more you for parking. That. Yeah. I got that yesterday too. Oh my God, it's packed every day. It is packed. It's been it's been great. Thank you for that. And, uh, and I would ask one thing with respect to the park that you follow up with the request that I made uh, yeah. that there is a permanent sign yeah. recognizing the contribution of the community preservation committee to the funding and construction uh, of that facility. Okay, was that the on what's What's on the big posters you enter in there? You're talking about it. Did well, the big you poster you enter, yeah, the big yeah. poster that you enter yeah. in there. I had trouble reading because of the fact that it's in in different it, different letters. And and and, okay. and and if I wasn't looking for that specifically, I would like to have something that's permanent. Like a permanent. No, thing. I want a permanent thing because that's part of what I've asked Glenda to follow through. Because sure. your grant agreement provides that you need to provide a permanent recognition of the contribution Perfect. of the CPC. I'm for absolutely that. happy. So. To. It's kind of the first. I, heard this mentioned, but I didn't get any details yeah. uh, from the, the land bank, I think. Uh, well, I, I, I talked to Lidara about it, and then I don't know what how that's going to follow through, because she's got, she's doing something she's off island now. So. I'll make sure yeah. that it gets taken yeah. care of. I would so appreciate like a brass that. plaque or something like that. I, something tasteful. I, you know, the fact is, that yeah. the, the thing is, I just want, I, I want to be able to, uh, because I think it's really important for the community to understand yeah, that their tax dollars are being done uh, and creating incredible exactly. projects for the benefit of this community in the three areas. Yeah. Uh, and so the fact is, is, is that, that, that we haven't really, that's, that's our fault. We haven't in, followed well, up clearly enough. Well, I think enough. it's first, first, uh, quite reasonable, uh, very reasonable request. Well, it's part, part, of, it's, part, it's part of the great part of the grant request, right. grant yeah. contract to no, you. No, so. I think it makes sense. So <laughs> okay. we'll get it right, either way, we'll get it no, right. No, no, right, right. So. terrific. Okay. Any, other, any other questions uh, uh, of, of the applicants today? Right. No. Uh, Jason, uh, where are we on, uh, on the Coffin School? Where are we on the fence? The, the fence. fence being, the fence has been finally in May. They came and fixed it, and they are working on painting it as we speak. As long as it doesn't rain today, they're supposed to put the first coat of the special box. Yeah. Because it looked. Yeah. Well, it took a while because it what did. happened was with DeAngelis. Um, they had to work within the parameters of the money that was awarded, yeah. and then all the iron chain pricing changed and everything. So they were trying to find ways to. So I think DeAngelis actually um, made the donation, but <laughs> <laughs> that's why it took so long. So once they paint it, uh, hopefully it will be the last PSR, and then we'll be done with it. Is that still part of the one at the cemetery? And there were, were there three fences involved. Uh, the funding would, won't wound up only being enough for the Coffin School and the Mitchell plot. And at some okay. point, um, Prospect Hill might come back and yeah. ask for funding. Yeah, for they should come back. back. Okay, and the Mitchell plot is done. Yes, oh, that good. They just want to know it's well and, there, and there's, and there's no, no, nothing left on the building itself, right, in terms of yes. that's still open? I think there is, the isn't there still, still open? needs to be worked on and you awarded funding for that last year. Yeah. And Wayne should be starting hopefully this fall. To okay. work on all along the sides and okay. that work. Good. All right. And, and, and is there is there anything that you can do with respect to? I know you restored the sidewalk be when, when after Jack Gardner fell on it, but is there anything that 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 the contractors can do with respect to the moss buildup and the and the and the, the fact that the slippery brick? Very slippery. Uh, I don't know. They have done. So that was actually that when you I addressed it last year. That was something we were already working on. It just coincided with well. Hope, Unfortunately, it didn't come before he fell. Um, but we do, um, that's the word I want, power wash yeah. it. But the problem also is is that the sun just doesn't, because of the building. Yeah, the sun areas, doesn't come to dry it. So it's, con it's a constant thing. We power yeah. wash it, and like a couple months later, it's coated again. I will bring it up at our meeting, which is like in a week or so, to we power wash it again. But it just, I don't know, it also, um, the water it condenses too, so it, it, it's also always. Yeah. Wet on top of that, and, and it then just burns the ice, growing. and then you just slide yeah. it. Yeah, every, no, every brick sidewalk it, can do that. So we're trying our best, but because yeah, it makes it, it it makes the problem of the handicapped accessibility 
an I issue know, with respect to I know, we also yeah. had those strips, the sand, uh, you know, the strips on the, yeah, the, on the, on the ramp. ramp. Yeah. And those even got coated with stuff, and then they started to peel. It, 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 it's just, it's been a constant battle for the coffee school well, system. I wonder if there's something that you can sprinkle, like, uh, Salt for winter ice, that something kills, that would like all the time. Yeah. That kills the brick. But also, but well, also one of the what's and just an example is all on the drainage problem. Mm -hmm. No, Wayne, when he laid that, he redid the whole thing. He, he, he did redid the, the whole and walkway. There is like stone under underneath. Stone, stone dust so, under. Yeah, it was. Dust. It's okay. like a, yeah. it was a, a, mm. a, a very big expense. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you do that walk, and a pain in the butt. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay, good morning. Uh, you have been with us before, so I think you know some of the drill. Uh, what uh, This is being videotaped uh, and audio taped. And uh, so uh, what we ask is that A, you identify yourself, and B, uh, take about uh, 10 minutes to sort of flush out uh, the, uh, the project. Um, and we've been asked to speak loudly because you forgot your hearing aid this morning. So, and I don't uh, have my lenses. I need them. <laughs> <laughs> I still know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> you read <laughs> yeah. Good morning. So please start out by identifying yourself and welcome. Thank you so much. Um, I'm Ella Finn, and I'm the executive director of Landmark House, otherwise known as Nanjet Community Service Inc. And Steve, Steve Rothke. I uh, live out in Wisconsin, and I'm the uh, vice president of Landmark House. I need Steve's father. <laughs> and Tyler's grandfather. Yeah, Tyler's All right. grandfather. Okay, All right, let's start. Uh, just to sort of flesh out, to uh, help us understand uh, more, help us understand better the request that you're having and, and why we should be giving you money as opposed to anybody else. Absolutely. Um, thanks so much for having us and for even considering our proposal. We do appreciate it. And before we go further, we want to thank you profusely for the funds that you granted us this past cycle, um, which we used to replace every window at Landmark House, making it um, about 30% more energy efficient. Um, on our capital campaign as we go forward, we're looking at a 100-year-old building and trying to preserve the building itself, the nature of the building, and its function, which is the low-income housing for seniors and people with disabilities. Um, we have many projects in the offing. The roof is the one that's presenting um, the most issues at present. We do have leaks that leak into people's apartments, and the size and expenditure involved is not something that our federal funding agencies will grant us money for. We have to basically find funds for ourselves. Um, their budgets are becoming even more constricted, and the regulations even more um, heinous. Onerous, <laughs> Onerous yeah. really. So um, we're looking for or requesting funds to replace the roof, and Jim Lydon would, is the person that we would like to do that, that with. Um, it's been done in the past, and unfortunately, the lowest bid was accepted for lack of funds, and the project didn't really last it, the lifetime we were expecting. Um, the, we've, you know, we've lots of big projects, but basically that's the nuts and bolts of it. We have 25 units that we rent to persons who are 62 or older or have disability and who have very low income. Most are from Nantucket or have a connection to Nantucket, um, sort of like the people at the Island Home. They have a um, sort of a web of family and relations, etc. So everybody, it's a tight-knit community. Um, we generally, people live there 10, 15 years. Our oldest resident or longest resident has been there since the doors opened in 1986. Um, and she's doing fine. She's still there. She is. <laughs> she is. Um, our wait list for Landmark House is between four and five years. And um, there's no way to make that any faster. And there's no way to, to make that just peculiar to Nantucketers. It's open to anybody in the state or the country because we're federally funded. Um, what else do we do? I'd just like to clarify the, the roof situation. Uh, about five years ago, before we realized that CPC could help us, uh, we put a new roof on the Grossman Wing, which is eight apartments. It's attached to the original Landmark House. Right? The, the, uh, I think we call it the, Bur the Grossman Wing. The Grossman Wing. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so at the time, we didn't have an awful lot of money. We sought bids. We accepted a low bid. <coughs> 
um, and uh, the roof had to be, um, after the, the new roof went on, it didn't, it was not holding up well. We found out that the uh, contractor did not do everything he was supposed to do. We patched it up and it's, it's uh, usable as it is. So the roof that we're talking about now is for the main building, the Landmark House building, and, and that is in dire need of replacement. We also eventually will be looking at replacing um, the gutters and the trim on, on the building as well. And uh, that's for another day. But uh, I think it's imperative that we get this roof fixed. You know, with or without CPC help, we're going to have to do it. So uh, we're here to make our case. Mm -hmm. Linda. Um, you're going to use <coughs> architecturals or a heavier shingle? Can get through the HDC, the meant to last longer. They have 50 well, year shingles now. Right, Mr. Leiden has, who has done the proposal and who we believe is one of the career contractors, okay. is going to facilitate all of that first. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I just get the heaviest and the longest lasting. So you have to, again, it takes a, it takes a beating on a storm. Right, we're pretty exposed. I mean, right there's, there. there's nothing between you and the harbor. Right. <laughs> Well, I think the windows look great. That's oh, thank you, thank you. It We're hoping to be able to get the trim done, as we said, so that it will, you'll see the value of them. Or and explain why the town has no responsibility for that building. Sure. Um, the land that we sit on, just as the island home sits on a piece of property right there, is town-owned. So we have a 99-year lease with the town. And back in the 80s, that building was going to be demolished because nobody could come up with a plan for it. And Bernie Grossman and some other very well-meaning citizens um, managed to figure out how to access funds from rural development, uh, the USDA rural development, um, in order to uh, refurbish it and change it into apartments because it had been individual um, just units for people who were living in a nursing home. And so when, um, when the Island Home opened in 1985, all of that work started and in 1986 Miss Gibbs moved in and was delighted. And then in the 2000s, early 2000s, um, Helen Trevi, who was the director at the time, um, figured out that we could get more funds from HUD to build a, a, an addition of the eight units, which fit nicely in there, didn't really change the structure so much or its appearance. And uh, the need is there, obviously, both, both places have a wait list of five years or so. <coughs> and so the town doesn't have any responsibility for the building or the grounds. We're we hold that responsibility. Yeah, it's a non-profit that actually owns. That's right. It's and operates the building. Yes. John? So judging by the view of your room from here, it looks oh, pretty bad. Oh, can you see it? Oh, yes, you can. It's quite bad. Yes. Um, did ICO make any reimbursements for the failed shingles on the first go-around or this go-around? Before my time, to be honest, and I don't mean to be begging off. Do you? I, I don't think so. I think we funded it. I think we may have been able to use some reserve funds for the project. and I. You helped me with that. Yeah. I think the uh, I think it was around fourteen thousand dollars. I think okay. it was yeah, largely an installer. Problem. Error was it? Error. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I, I, it was a fifty-fifty. I would yeah. say. Yeah. There was a, a the Ico architectural okay. yeah, that yeah, organic material that had yeah. failed over ten years yeah. instead of thirty years as advertised. So. They won't even sell them here. But and that was the question: was there was a contractor or was it the quality of the shingles? It sounds like it might have been both. Yeah. Um, and just looking at Jim, Jim, he has a great reputation here, yeah. and um, oh, yeah. I have no problem and with that. Quickly. Yeah, mm -hmm. and but um, there he mentions that there's a, a lifetime warranty. So what is that actual warranty? It, it's just on the manufacturer shingles, or is it on the the workmanship? So if that fails because there's another issue with a with subpar contracting or workmanship, where is that warranty? I mean, I what does think that mean? The warranty is on is on the shingles, but I think Leiden given the person that he is, yeah. he'll stand behind his work, yeah. uh, unlike some other roofing contractors. Right. And also, I'd be, um, we've brought this up in numerous uh, applications already. Mm -hmm. I'd be careful with the, uh, the word repairs, because in his, uh, his, his statement, um, Jim Leiden, uh, he mentions that, uh, and closes the quote for the main building roof and the repairs to the new wing. Um, we can't fund any kind of repairs. We can really just do the restoring, restoration. Right. Yeah, and that was careful in the description, just saying in that particular one when when you go through the uh, 
the full application. And right. it does look like it's a, a very reasonable being in this contracting and building yeah. business. Right. Right. You know, with the with the materials that is using the the uh, the copper, the size of the roof, um, and the the um, certainty and lifetime shares, right. I think it's a very um, modest, if not reasonable. Application. Well, and we've been very fortunate. I've been with this is my fourth year at Landmark House. Um, and I've worked in aspects of healthcare and whatnot on the island, but we've been so fortunate to be so well regarded and so supported in the community. Um, you know, many people think we're the uh, that we're the nursing home, so we disabuse them of that notion. But um, people who come to the building are always surprised about how lovely it is, how comfortable. There's a very nice culture there, um, and it's it's very supportive. Though we don't offer supportive services, you know, I'm the the ultimate rescuer, so kind of do. <laughs> um, but, for example, Marine Home Centre, the bid that they gave us was, um, for the windows last year, was, you know, what it cost, but the contractors who did the work could not have been nicer. And they were in and out of apartments, you know, multiple days in a row. Um, they went above and beyond. Um, one of our clients actually had, um, had to come home from hospital and the only way she could come home was if a bed, a, a hospital bed was installed and she had so much stuff in her apartment it was becoming an issue and she might not be able to come home for a week. And the boys took it on themselves and moved everything and got the bed in and she came home the next day. I mean, they were just fantastic. And we, we encounter that sort of generosity often, which is very encouraging. And, and just for point of reference, um um, going back to the quality, if you look in just the basic application here with the um, the proposal, there it's very inclusive. A lot of people think that roof is just a roof. Um, it and also the affects the flashing, the sidewall. Um, so that is everything. complete mm -hmm. removal of that, and it seems like it's done very uh, above the standards that somebody would just give a roof and strip it and put it on. Well, he um, doesn't do anything. Yeah, like that. He... but they're very detailed. I really like the proposal. Right. Yeah, I used Jim on my own house, and he did um, the homestead, and it was about 48, so he gave them a really good price. Yeah. So his work is excellent. And he'll step in. If something goes wrong, he steps in and he fixes it. But, you know, the, the, for those who don't know where the building came from, it didn't start there. It was the alms house. Mm -hmm. And some of the old pictures, you will still see alms house on it. It was for the poor and injured in here. And it came in from Pulpis. They moved that whole structure by ox mm -hmm. all the way in from Pulpis to that spot. Wow. Crazy. Wow. And the last two Indians on the island lived at Landmark House. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was told it was moved by guards. It's interesting to hear that. I heard it came, it was rolled in. Really? I didn't hear it came across the creek because it would have been a hard time to get it across the creek because yeah. it's so damn shallow. Yeah. The like Dreamland said, came by Dreamland. Barge. Dreamland. 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 That's right. That's right. It Dreamland floated, came, actually yeah. came right. down from Main Street, floated right. over there, then <laughs> it took the pieces <laughs> off and floated it back. Hello, I take exception. I think the last two Indians live in my house. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Native American. <laughs> I'm an immigrant. I can make that mistake. <laughs> I just have one question, and that goes back to you mentioned being a federal facility. Mm -hmm. Do you have the luxury of being able to choose who you want, or no. is, is there any guarantee that Jim will get the bid? I guess is what I'm saying. Um, in, interestingly, and um, sadly, when I shared with the agent for rural development specifically, she seems to be more difficult. When I shared with her that we were so fortunate to get all of this big money to replace every window in, in the house, she said, instead of what I expected her to say, oh my God, how fantastic, how can other communities avail of those kinds of funds, which I was going to be happy to share, she said, you know, if you're going to get any work done here, you need to let us know about that. <laughs> but yeah. meanwhile, they will tell you that they are not going to fund those big capital projects. They're just not going to do it. We deal um, with rural development yeah, and the housing authority, and yeah. they are uh, just... Obnoxious. That's all I can say. Well, that's and right. uncooperative. I yes. was wondering how we guard against putting money into a roof and find ourselves five years in a position that you were in on the gross. Market. Having to take a little bit. You know what I mean? That's well, and that's, how do we guard that against well, that? Yeah. The, well, we can't offer any guarantees, excepting that we have a lovely board. Um, I work hard to do all the right things and you know yeah, follow no, within no. the lines. No, no, yeah. no, uh, casting no. No, no, no. I know. on local. Right. But. How do, you, yeah. how do we guarantee we get a good job, I guess, is what I'm saying. You know? I think, well, I always prefer to use local contractors. Yeah. Um, no, I think Tim's question is, 
Or is there any guarantee that you will be able to choose the contractor yeah, to do I'm the at. job? Because we're, we, we, if we would be granting the entire funding, we'd be granting the funding on the, on the assumption that Leiden is going to do the job. Oh, yes, absolutely. If, in fact, it's not Leiden, it creates a problem for us because of the fact of our concern with respect to what Steve talked about, what happened with the, the right. low-bid contractor the last right. time. Right. I think sure. that's what your point that's is. Right. Right. They don't have any say over what contractor we use. No, okay. They're hired to public bid. Uh, we're, we're prepared to give him uh, a deposit tomorrow. No, no, but, but, but the point right. is, right. is that right. it was just a point of clarification mm -hmm. whether or not so you were able to choose the contractor because your representation to us is as to the quality of the contractor right. relative to the amount of the award that we're giving. Yeah. And so Tim wanted clarification with respect to that, that you have the choice and that can't be overridden by the feds or any Absolutely. other supplier of case. funding yeah. to you. Because you're a private 501c3, so you're not under the public bidding requirements mm -hmm. that right. everybody else is for a town project. That's we right. contribute every month um, to rural development in to a reserve account that's in our name. Yeah. Um, in order to use those funds, we have to um, request permission and we have to uh, give supporting uh, documentation that's necessary. I'm supposed to get three bids. I can't ever get bids. You know, I'm lucky if somebody answers the phone, let alone comes <laughs> yeah. to get bids. And I have to not argue with her, but I have to present a case every time I do a budget or every time I ask for a dollar that um, the cost of living is so much higher. Um, using off-island contractors, you know, at the outset might be a bit cheaper, but they're not around to do any sort of restoration. And um, that, that the population we serve are too vulnerable to take those chances. But with these funds, there would be no, um, okay. they don't have any say over who is. That was the question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions uh, that we have at this point in time? Nope. Cool. Okay. Thank, Thank you so uh, very much. We, 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 we would like to to uh, give you an award, but, but we, what we would like to do is to not win the award the next time. Because you won the award for the heaviest amount of paper for us to schlep around oh, and read. And so, so we, we, we think that, that if you're coming back to us next time, you will get favorable marks for brevity. And, and less weight in terms of... Wait a minute, have we met? <laughs> 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 I like the five page report. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much yeah. for seeing us and for considering us at all and for the funds from last year. But, but also th thank you for what you're doing with respect to the seniors uh, for, for this island. It, it is, it's really, really important because as we all recognize, we are an aging uh, population yes, all in are. this country, but, but very much so in, in this particular island. And so uh, addressing the affordable housing needs uh, is really a critical factor, and I so thank you for your. Yeah. We well, appreciate the people that. that are yeah. the residents around that building would be homeless without that building. Yeah, true. Yeah. Well, thank you again so thank much. You. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I don't have anything else on the agenda for today. What uh, what I'm going to do is to uh, work with uh, with Glenna to take a look and see when we get the additional information in, and then circulate some dates. To see uh, now, what's your preference? In the past, what we did was we we did uh, one year we did back to back, uh, two days back to back. Another year we did uh, a day in between. What's the preference in terms of the thought process of trying to to look as we're scheduling to do back to back days or uh, have a break of a day in between two? Are meetings? we talking about the same week as our regular meeting on the fifteenth? I, I have no idea at this point in time. Because I don't think I think that's too early because of the fact that I don't think that that I'm going to have enough information from from the state relative to the level of funding. I think yeah. what we did last time with Glenna putting out a little survey and let us know that these are available, you'll be get, be able to get a better sense of all the boards available. Yeah, well, so yeah, well what, I, what I want to do is I want to know whether or not whether or not people like the idea of of two days in a row to do this because we meet we meet two days on the uh, the allocation. And the first day we meet to do a rough run through of, of an allocation of, of, of a, a, does it fit in, B, what's the sense of what the dollar allocation is to be considered? Because on the second day, we then have to, to figure out where we're going to cut and dice because of the fact that, that in spite of what we do, we're not going to come in under whatever number that we have because we're going to be... Uh, at least maybe close to $2 million short in terms of funding. So the question is whether or not we want to do that on day one and day two, right 
next to each other or whether we want to have a break in between sort of like a Tuesday and a Thursday. So long as it's that week of after the 20, I can't meet that Monday the 21st, but as long as it's that week, I'm fine yep. with day, to yep. day, day back to back, I don't care. Well, questions? Yep. So when we laid out the current schedule, yep. I, if, if I'm correct, I think next week we're posted Thursday and Friday. Well, yeah, but, but we're, gonna, we're not going to do those. Uh, we'll, we're we'll gonna, let me finish. We, okay. So we're posted Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday next week. Right. We were available. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we could either do Tuesday and Thursday if you wanted the day in between. Yeah. Or we could do Thursday and Friday and yeah. back to back. Is that the, is that the That's question? my question. But my it's question not next week. No, but it's, it's not going to be next week. My question is why is what, that? Because we're waiting for information. Because I'm, uh, we're waiting for additional information. And I'm not here and yeah. a couple other people. No, the but the point is, is that 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 a we're waiting for additional information and b uh, 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 we need to 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 pull some stuff together. So and and we need to get an a, a an agreement on the part of everybody in terms of the days that they are available. Well, that's okay. why I was asking. So I thought we had agreed. Like I booked a whole month of work myself being available the first to the 18th. Now we're saying we're not going to do that. We only did that because we weren't sure we were going to be able to get everybody over with this week. So right. they were just a stopgap that was not written could, in stone. Could I offer a compromise? <laughs> um, being that we have those three days booked and available and we all were privy to that and hopefully clear a schedule for that. No, uh, I was aware. Well, some, most of us. The but if time. would we be able to maybe take one of those days on the Thursday or Friday mm -hmm. to accommodate even you know Tim with his work schedule and at least get some of the, half of the applications reviewed because I know we're no, waiting for additional don't, information. Don't, well, we, we don't, don't have no, the information no, no, the, for all, all or no, half. The point, the point is, the point is, is right. that that on the first, we what, told them that. the procedure that we go through on the first day is we go through every application and we make a preliminary determination of the A, whether or not it fits under the language of uh, and is eligible for an award, and B, what the initial allocation is proposed with respect to that particular application. Right. Okay. And so what and I was we have, even suggesting, Mr. Chair, that it would, if we did it on Thursday or Friday, we I, followed it up the following I, Monday. I, I understand, but, but we, have, we, we have said that we're not going to have all of the information until October 11th. Uh, at, at this point, and in there's time. only three of us that have been here every single hearing. Yeah. Modifications and everybody else needs to catch up with the tapes and everything much. else. I mean, we'll be in the ballpark. Yeah. We could have a full well, preliminary. Be here. I'm one there's of at least four. four. I mean, I don't care. I'll go on no. whatever, but right. it seems no, like Joe we're going to. Okay, let me. Aside from all of us, we're not going to be here. Ken and I. Hold on. Everyone. What's four? Initially, what did we have open? Tuesday, Thursday. The 17th, 18th, and 19th? No. No, next, but next, next week. Next week? Yes. Yeah, yeah, next week, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. But I just don't no. feel like we're going to have everyone's, like, we've asked no. people to, to break it into two or yeah. sections. Yeah, I just don't feel like we have all information to really make an assessment of, like, what is that number they can give us that can work? I, I, don't, I don't think I can be able to vote. I'm not going to go there. Well, well, no, it's not a final vote. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. It's just like, it's kind of like, this is how much money we have. Here's our application. Well, we won't even Try know that at that early. Okay. We won't, the closer we get to the third week of October, we'll have a better idea of the funds coming back. We have no clue what it is right now. The state won't tell us. So, so, so where are we? I'm up for whatever. Yeah, so just, the, I like your I'm idea. I'm the third week. <laughs> I'm open. Yeah, I, can, I can do both. I'd like to be here, back to back, but I'm not here. Yeah. I've when been out of here since here? Christmas. Mm -hmm. When you're not here on Monday? Just next week, 7th through the 11th. The rest of the month, I don't care. But we're talking about the week of the 21st. Tim, Tim what's, what's, your, what's your timetable? Well, I, I, I booked three days a week till the 18th so I could be here. Okay. And um, after the 18th, I was committed back. I work at Braintree, so it's a little yeah. harder for me to schedule. Are you up there every day? Uh, usually not... three days a week. Which okay. three days? Which three days so that we can try to work around? Well... Uh, is what you're saying that you are thinking towards the end of the month, like the week of the twenty first, like the last yeah. week of the month? Yeah, sort of towards the end of the month. Because we'll have a better idea from yeah. what we have. It's the last full week in October, the twenty first through the twenty fifth. Right. I'm not here the twenty fourth to the twenty fifth. And which days do you work that week, or the following week even? Well, I have the luxury of picking the days. Yeah. Okay. So let's 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 take so a look at the at the last. You want to be here. So the last 
last full week is the Monday the 24th through the 25th or the 28th through the 31st November 1st so let's take let's 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 send out as John suggested a what days people could could are available any day from Monday the 21st to Friday November 1st. Correct. I'm not available okay. Monday the 21st. No, we the point yeah. is what, no. what we're going to do is everybody get back as to what's available, right. not what you can't do, what, what you can do. No. And what we will so then do no. is take a look no. to see no. where, the, where, where the days look like right. we can get everybody to go. And what we will do is book those days and that, that will then go, and they don't have to be side by each. Uh, the fact is, is that that we will have two days to be able to do what we've done in the past. It might read it, itself out. And yeah, are we right. meeting here? Well, the thing is, is they, they, the thing is, is that 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 that, that um, we're not going to need uh, um, uh, NCTV because of the fact that in the executive sessions we have never videotaped them. Okay, so we could meet here, or we could meet at the water company. What's your preference? I, um, I, I, I like this space here. I like the Wicked Bakery is right over there. Bring some goodies. Sophie's is right there. Right, bring some goodies. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. So, 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 what we'll do is we will, we will, once we decide on the, on the, on the dates, we will arrange to, to have the meetings here. Is that everybody? Is everybody comfortable with that? We're all happy. We're good. That's great. Okay. All right. Thanks for all. Thank you. Thank you. We make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries unanimously. Thank you.